Win a Pageant, Episode 81. I created this step-by-step process after training thousands of women across the U.S. to win. Now you can have access to these winning strategies when you join me every Wednesday. Let's win a pageant. Hey girl, welcome to another episode of the Win a Pageant podcast. I'm your coach, Alicia Darby. Now politics can be a scary topic in pageantry, mostly because it's hard to tell exactly how you really should be answering these questions. For example, should you just scan the room and tell them what you think they believe? Or should you just bluntly and honestly answer with your honest opinion and risk offending the others and possibly even creating a great divide? Or should you gracefully evade the question altogether and attempt to change the topic? (laughs) Now, two most recent and memorable political questions came from the Miss USA pageant in the final question on stage. You might remember Carrie Prejean in 2009. She just gave her blunt, honest opinion about same-sex marriage in her top five question, and she ended up being first runner-up. Then in 2016, Chelsea Hardin, Miss Hawaii, gracefully danced around the question of who would she vote for in the upcoming election. Oh my goodness. And she too was first runner-up. Now, I wish that I could tell you that there was a surefire way to answer any question and absolutely win, but there's not. It is truly a delicate dance. Now, what I can tell you is that no matter what, you have to deliver your response with certainty in what you are saying. Your pageant interview is not a quiz. Okay, so breathe a sigh of relief. They are not judging what you're saying as much as how you are saying it. I tell all of my clients that you don't have to answer but you do have to respond. Isn't that freeing? I'm going to say it again. You don't have to answer the question, but you do have to respond. Sometimes we are given questions that require a yes or no answer, or they require a very clever or enjoyable or just lovely response. Suddenly, when you realize that, you Understand that you're not a political candidate or a governor or lobbying activist, you know. You're probably a student or maybe a teacher or a nurse or any career you may have. You're a pageant woman. So you don't have all the answers. So don't try to be right, quote unquote. I was putting that in air quotes, but you couldn't really see it. (laughs) Just be lovely. So how do you do that? Well, first, it begins with knowing yourself deeply and within the context of the greater community. By that, I mean you've got to know what you stand for and what you believe. And you've got to recognize how what you stand for and you believe compares to those in your greater community. Whether you're representing your state or the nation, how is your personal opinion similar to or different from the greater community? That's going to give you context to know how to deliver your response. Then I want you to recognize that you are a spokesperson for a larger cause, larger organization, or larger group in general. Your voice carries weight because of your association. So if you are a state title holder, the reason that people are perking up to listen to you is because of your association as a Miss title holder. That's important to recognize because you don't want to speak your personal opinion in a way that's going to offend the organization of which you are representing. Now, does that mean that you always have to align with what they agree with? Well, no, not necessarily, but you do want to make sure that you are representing an organization that represents what you do. Okay, so make sure that the alignment is taking place so that you feel confident standing up for the organization or association for which you are the spokesperson. Finally, I want you to know the hill that you are prepared to die on. Now, you've probably heard that before, the hill that you'll die on. That's really just saying that this is what you stand for. And if you select a hill you're willing to die on, it means that you will stand for this stance, this cause, this meaning, this value, no matter what. In fact, you believe it so much that you are willing to lose the title over this stance. Now, we usually do have at least one value or one core concept that we are willing to go to the gallows for. 
That is what you are standing for. Now, not all things are going to be things that you absolutely are standing for. But for example, Carrie Prejean in 2009, she was standing against same-sex marriage because of her faith and her beliefs. That was a hill she was prepared to die on. She wasn't going to compromise her belief in her faith system by kind of being a sellout and agreeing with the general population, that type of thing. But she only knew that because of step number one, which is knowing yourself deeply and knowing how it compares in the context. Carrie Prejean has been known to say that she actually knew that her answer would cost her the title and it was a risk she was willing to take. So she knew that that was a hill she was prepared to die on. She wanted to use her voice to make that powerful impact and it has led her to really do incredible things. When you stand for what you truly, truly believe, it will lead you in the right direction. Remember that life does go on after the pageant. So even if you do win, you're going to give it up in a year later. So either way, you're going to be starting a new career. And the words that you spoke back then when you had that platform to stand on will echo throughout the rest of your life. So start with knowing yourself deeply. Know where you stand. Then answer confidently. Don't shrivel up in a corner, okay? Come with a full understanding of yourself and your community and your values. Then what the judges are truly looking for is if you get asked a political question, they don't want you to say, "Um, well, I actually think that it's, um, you know, this is a tough one because, well, okay, they do not want that. They want you to say, listen, blah, 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 blah. Here is what I believe and this is what I stand for and here is my confident answer, okay? That's what you're looking for. Now, you still may be one of the ones that gets the unlucky question. That's what the owner of the pageant, Donald Trump, at the time said about Carrie Prejean's final question in 2009. He said, well, she did get an unlucky question. (laughs) But seven years after the pageant, whether you win or lose, you will be able to sleep at night that you answered with confidence and with ease. And that, my dear, is how you win in life. If you missed the masterclass last weekend, don't worry because I saved it for you. You can watch it at interview.winapageant.com. And I want to let you know that enrollment is still open for the pageant interview game plan. And our private Facebook group is keeping me super busy. (laughs) We're having so much fun. I'm reviewing paperwork giving advice about wardrobe and onstage introduction and answering all sorts of pageant questions, even beyond interview. In fact, earlier this week, I did a special training on how to deal with the scariest judges. It was a special training in honor of Halloween, a special Halloween treat for our members. So if you are ready to nail your pageant interview in just four weeks, Get the full scoop at interview.winapageant.com. And I'll see you next week. Hey there, I'm Alicia Darby. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching that last video. If you totally loved it and got something from it, would you just click subscribe right here to subscribe to our YouTube channel? Hey, I am here for you and I've got so many more trainings and videos for you. In fact, this one would be a really great one to watch next. Or if that topic doesn't interest you, then try this one. It's my most recent video training. So I think both of these would be really great for you. Thank you again so much for subscribing. I am honored to be your coach. I'll see you again soon.